You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 8th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we wish my brother a happy birthday and safe travels as he visits his daughter, his son-in-law, and his grandson, Kevin. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Kevin got his little pumpkin hat that Granny Franny knit for him. Yes, yes. Now little Ham has a pumpkin hat. Isn't that little nice? Little Ham will be a pumpkin before the end of the month. That's right. Yes. We. Well, I thought I'd start today with uh, a letter to the editor in our local paper of class. I, I should say it's from someone who has a letter in there every month, like clockwork. Uh huh. It's the same guy, and it's kind of a response in my mind to a review we received this week, or at least I may, was made aware of it this week. Yes. Um, Doctor Turkey Toot. Yeah. Well, you know, Doctor, you got to respect <laughs> the title right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Turkey Toot uh, uh-huh. said that our sound was good, but our content was not good. Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, and <laughs> uh-huh. and he seemed to f- to imply that we weren't far left enough for him. Oh, really? And so I'm grateful uh, for anyone that wants to push anyone further to the left. Because sure. Because I think, you know, we need to not be compromising. We've learned that this week. Uh-huh. Big lesson is... Don't don't give fifty percent of the field away because they'll just ask for more. So yeah. don't give fifty percent of the field away before the game starts. Right, exactly. You know? Just don't. And so, um, I had a sense from Doctor Turkey Tooth that he lived in an area of the country, or at least had a social circle, where he didn't have to push back from sure anyone that's a Republican. You know, if if you're surrounded by fellow liberals and you, you then have the luxury of pushing people to the left. And mm-hmm. so I thought that Dr. Turkey Toot should hear, <laughs> hear a, a letter from Springfield. This is right. from our town. Barney wrote to the uh, local newspaper. And as Driftglass says, he's had, he has a letter to the editor every month. You're, every you're month. allowed one every four weeks. A clockwork. He times his letter and then once it's published counts 30 days so he can send in another one and and the paper at this point which is five pages long and mostly obituaries and sports um exists for people like barney right that's really right. It, it is not a it is not even a real paper anymore uh, there's an article in the atlantic about what gatehouse media is doing everywhere and people locally the 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 minority of people locally who would like an actual local newspaper have been pointing to that saying, this is what happened to us. Mm -hmm. Um, They're selling the building. The paper's crap. Half the stories are, are AP rip and read a bunch more are from Rockford for some reason, which is nowhere near where we live. Um, So it's but Barney is from Springfield. Barney's and and there's an op-ed page that exists to give Barney a platform to make him feel like, because there's a lot of Barney's in this town. Mm-hmm. A lot more Barneys than there are uh, Drift Glass and Blue Gal, I'll tell you that. And, and the first two paragraphs I'm going to read, I have no argument with. He says, no. are we a sovereign country or not? Are we a nation of laws or not? The most overused word in Washington, D.C. is accountability, and it's a meaningless concept because anyone who is connected is rarely held to account. Barney, I'm with you. <laughs> and if you just put the pen down, yeah, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and he says... If the policies of the Biden administration are not impeachable offenses, then I have no idea what would be. Mm -hmm. Now, this is this is where it gets interesting. Yeah, certainly a letter and phone call by the previous president pales in comparison. That's right. But then again, a partisan press played a huge part in that fiasco. That's true. But turns a blind eye to the egregious <clears throat> accent, actions of the current president. Mm-hmm. Have we completely abandoned the Constitution and founding principles of this nation? For Is this what? America anymore? No. <laughs> <clears throat> Are we really going to let the far left drag us inexorably towards socialism? 
Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, we are, Barney. Yep. You're already there, Barney. I bet you Barney's living in a double wide collecting Social Security and Medicare, which means you're already four fifths the way to socialism Mm -hmm. just to keep your ass above ground. But um, I I would strongly urge you um, out there to dig through the archives of your local papers to about 12 years ago. And you will find a whole bunch of Barneys occupying a whole bunch of op-ed pages saying the same thing about Barack Obama and George W. Bush. Or go further back to uh, Clinton. Sure. And, and, you know, there's someone on Twitter today saying, you know, Hillary Clinton never responded to a single subpoena. I don't see why Trump should. I'm sure that that meathead actually believes that. I'm sure (laughs) he believes every word he he says. Yeah. But I remember vividly. The, the hue and cry, and, and I was here in Springfield a big chunk of the time uh, during that time, listening to the, the locals bitching about what a catastrophe Barack Obama was, mm-hmm. a socialist, not even born here, real you know, Kenyan, and his, his, his suits and his attitude and his uppityness and his, his very black wife and blah, 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 pale in comparison to anything George Bush did who was a good Christian man who just tried to do right and the liberal press uh-huh. wrecked that poor man's reputation. Yeah. This is, of course, these are the same people who will then turn around and tell you they never heard of George Bush. Yeah. Because it's embarrassing to admit you voted for the worst president in American history twice. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. but this, our part of the country is full of Barneys. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's why. And we know what media they, they absorb. We do. And we know where they go when they want their public opinion heard. Uh, they mm-hmm. go to Facebook. Uh, local Facebook is a sewer and they go to the op-ed page of the paper and having sat on the editorial board, the citizens editorial board, I can tell you ed- editorial decisions of the paper were made routinely to pander to people like Barney. Keep Barney happy. Yeah. Cause Barney pays for the overhead, <laughs> pays for the salaries, mm-hmm. Barney pays for everything. And so we don't want to make Barney mad uh, because then we lose all the all obituaries the and cancel. Yeah. And then, then what do we got? We got nothing. Got nothing. They got next to nothing now, but you know they're hanging on by their nails, and Barney is keeping them afloat. So, you know, and as are we. I got to admit, you know, we take the same paper. This morning, I I, I stepped on an actual slug on the front porch <laughs> in my barefoot, uh, retrieving the damp paper which was sitting unshielded on a damp uh, stoop, uh, and read you know all six pages that were legible, and it really at this point feels like charity. Feels it like is charity. You know, it you is got supporting support. your local paper for the sake of the community. Right. And supporting your local paper when it does not deserve it. Right. Is right. a is a is one of those moral questions that I have that, you know, I, I struggle with. There's no um, one nowhere in our notes about the Facebook outage or the Facebook uh whistleblower. No. We should probably mention that at the top too, as long as we're getting into uh into social media and talking about what's going on in the world. Facebook was down for what seventy four days in a row. No, is that five right? Five hours. Five hours. Five hours. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, everyone got real quiet, and the world felt like a much better place. Um, it's like you know a sewer pipe has been pouring raw sewage into your home for years suddenly stops for no explicable reason. Well, I want to temper that statement for a minute mm-hmm. because okay. there are a lot of women and women of color and mm-hmm. stay at home moms and. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, who make their living off of Instagram? Yes, who make their are. living selling craft supplies? I understand that on Facebook, um, and it is because Facebook is a monopoly over social media small sales people mm-hmm. that their businesses went down all afternoon on a Monday, and uh, the fact that Facebook was permitted to purchase Instagram and to mm-hmm. purchase WhatsApp. For no other reason than to get rid of competition was wrong. That's correct. And and it needs to be split up. So I'm not, you know, we go to Facebook and yes, I I deleted Facebook from my phone over a year ago. Mm -hmm. I'm hardly ever on Facebook except to post the podcast. And I also have a group, two groups that I uh, participate in because that's where they have decided to post meeting announcements and chat between members to, because mm-hmm. everybody's there. That's right. Um, and, it, but it's wrong. It's, it's dead <clears throat> wrong. It's a corporate it malfeasance that all, you know, that amount of the internet 
that we all depend upon for we depend upon for our livelihood and is owned by is, one very deeply nerdy evil, <laughs> person evil with evil no company. social skills <clears throat> who does everything by algorithm. Right, and and is as we know from the whistleblower was perfectly aware that what they were doing algorithmically was toxic, mm -hmm. was wrecking Harm democracy, yep. was harming women, um, was was inciting uh, violence and and overthrow of the U.S. government. We're perfectly aware of all that, yeah. but it, it it brought in revenue and it was algorithmically just distributing, you know, accelerating and accelerating, which is what it does. Well, and that was the most terrifying statement of all the stuff mm -hmm. that the whistleblower brought out. Um, the fact that if you were following Trump Republican Party, Ivanka Trump, you know, whatever Trump world stuff, if you were just looking for regular Republican politics, within a week, Facebook sends you to QAnon. Right. That's right. And, and the, the top I mean, 10 trending pages. Right. All the time, nine or eight or nine of them are always going to be the right wing extremist sites. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So I, I, I understand this is the same argument or discussion we had about Walmart yeah. 10, 20 years ago, which is yeah. there's this behemoth that is destroying local businesses, that is corrupting local politics, that is ruining the landscape. Um, but if you're putting a Walmart in a food desert um, where no other way for people to get produce or food or anything of, is available, you, you're kind of hard pressed to, to come down hard on them, which is the leverage that monopolies have over everyone. You can't, I mean, I work with a lot of local businesses and they were pushed and pulled and tugged and urged to put, you know, all their eggs in the Facebook basket because you can't compete with the big guys. If you don't have a website, you don't, if you're not on Facebook and I get it, <clears throat> but it doesn't detract from the fact that you are making a Faustian bargain with a fundamentally evil organization. You know, it's, it's evil corp. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, yeah, the world economy does depend on it, and that's a terrible thing. Um, and and people would get hurt if it were down for a long period of time, and people did get hurt for it being down for five hours. Um, it is also true that it is an open sewer mm -hmm. that is wrecking our country. Yeah, and it's yep. it's really hard for money for you money know, for money by for, algorithm, and it yeah. has the money. It's already nearly a trillion dollar company, and that is not enough. Yeah. So you've we've set up this a lot of these doomsday machines, just gobble up people and resources and money, and leave nothing but destruction in their wake, and there's no way to stop them except by legislation, and yeah. that's why politics is kind of important because you have well, to. Be and it able was to... kind of hilarious too. I'm I'm not trying to over talk you. No, but it's kind of hilarious that Marsha Blackburn, you know, sh shook her fist and said, "Follow the money" when she's taken. Ten thousand yeah. dollars from Facebook this year, not counting the three point nine million that Facebook executives have sent to Congress, and this is a situation of both sides. Eleven out of twelve people mm -hmm. on the committee listening to the whistleblower on Monday were recipients of Facebook campaign contributions. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why what Ed Markey is doing wrong <laughs> that he didn't get a contribution from Facebook. Yeah, you misheard it. It was swallow the money. Yeah, the um, check got lost in the mail for Ed Markey. But uh, no, I mean, he's he's the one decent guy who didn't take money from Facebook this mm -hmm. last cycle. So, um, Drift Glass, I'm going to go off topic for a minute. There yes. is apparently a website called Letterboxd, okay. which is a movie reviewing site. Uh huh. And um, Gawker tweeted that it is a crime that Letterboxd does not have direct messaging. People who feel the need to log every movie they watch deserve love just as much as anyone else. Uh -huh. And they got ratioed so hard by women saying, yeah, that just means that boys are going to be screaming at me because they loved, you know, whatever, yeah. some certain Star Wars movie that I didn't get. Fast and Furious 22. Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you celebrating the artwork of Fast and Furious 22? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's another big problem with these social media sites is how they, how they allow women to be abused and, and young girls. We talked about that. Uh, speaking of abusive women, Madison Cawthorn, um, <laughs> nice segue. Yeah. 
Uh, Neo-Nazi date rapist Madison Cawthorn is also a Bible scholar. I had no idea. Yeah. I never bumped into him at Harvard Divinity School. But uh, he decided to declare holy war on Democrats this week, which is kind of surprising because I'm a Democrat and I mm -hmm. go to church and I was liturgist last week. So, yeah. <laughs> um, And apparently he believes that the Old Testament... Uh, women Ruth and Esther read ahead somehow and are actually good Christian examples. Yeah, he, he did what you're not supposed to do with a mystery like the Bible, yeah. which is go to the end and see how it ends. Or cross the streams. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, you know, he he likes both Corinthians, as far as I know. Yeah, um, yeah. No, yeah. it's they're they're all fake. They're all yeah. they're all yeah. just they learn just enough Bible lingo to appeal to the rubes. Yeah, and own the libs, and that's it. And they don't need to. That's the part that just I, I, I steer away from because there's such a vortex of uh, individual criticism, which is necessary and important of Madison Cawthorn did this thing today. And my my inner voice says, well, of course he did. And of course it worked because, of course, well, Republicans but you shrug your shoulders. But rhetoric that that goes to it's a holy war and we represent God and they don't and they represent Satan mm -hmm. leads to we're allowed to kill them. And it has I'm, for, you know, millennia. I, that's that's. I'm not shrugging my shoulders because it's not dangerous. Mm -hmm. I'm shrugging my shoulders because it's always been dangerous. Yeah. And yeah. we just keep letting these people get elected. And the people, mm -hmm. the reason that people get elected, hey, you know, uh, the day after 9-11, Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell were blaming abortionists and the ACLU and lesbians mm -hmm. for 9-11. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, this, just, this just goes on on the right all the time. And it isn't that it isn't awful. It's that the reason it goes on the right is because 74 million Americans are wastes of skin and carbon. Brainwashed. But they're just yeah. fucking, they're, they're self-brainwashed. Mm -hmm. All they ever had to do was change the fucking channel. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. And now they're fucking lost. They're completely dead from the neck up. And I, I don't know what you do with a country where a third of them want to destroy the country because Tucker Carlson tells them to. Yeah. Yeah. Other than want to call children whores yeah, on the stand, sidewalk. Stand in front of because it's Tucker Carlson told them told them to do it. Masks is child abuse. Yeah. Uh, you know the per the person who who watches Tucker Carlson for anything other than reporting on what an awful job Tucker Carlson's doing, which is the sort of thing you do, which is a noble profession, uh, has flunked civility, civilization, and democracy, and they need to be studied like a virus, but they don't need to have their voices amplified. Mm -hmm, right. And yet we have a system where they just get away with this shit. And I don't know where this leads except to armed civil war at yeah. some point. Well, they've got the arms. Yeah. So. Well, so do liberals. I should probably warn them. There's a <laughs> lot more of us than there are of them. And we're a lot less tolerant of people coming into our neighborhoods and threatening our children than you think we might be. Talk to me about um, another podcast having a pretty good deconstruction of Beltway Press this week. Yeah, there's a, a little podcast out there. We'd like to give love to the smaller podcast called Pod Save America. <laughs> uh, it's uh, three of the three of those they're rascally. They're a lot bigger than we are, Drift yeah, Press. They're, they're a, a 10,000 times our size. Um, those three rascally speech writers for the, for the former president, Barack Obama, um, and other folks put together this podcast, networked really, if they have a whole bunch of, of things attached to them. I listen to them occasionally. I, I tend to be more on the move during the day. And I, so I listen to a lot of podcasts. And I listen to a lot of various podcasts, science fiction, and literature, and the bulwark and so on. And Pod Save America had a pretty good deconstruction of the Beltway Press framing of the budget debate. Um, again, it, it won't penetrate because once the Beltway Press has settled on a story, they're just like Republicans. All the facts in the world won't change the way they report what they've decided to report. But they did a very good job in a very short period of time of pointing out, first of all, Joe Biden is not a captive of the left. Joe Biden has not doomed his presidency by throwing in with fringe uh, pro progressives. Uh, the fact is that Democrats ran on Joe Biden's Build Back agenda. And now they're tr uh, trying to enact the Build Back agenda that Joe Biden and 98% of Democrats in Congress and the overwhelming majority of the public wants. Also... Go Bernie Sanders. Go Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's doing a great job. He pointed out that it's not a 50-50 split with Joe Manchin and Cinema because the entire Democratic Congress and the president are on the other side. So stop that. Um, this is an argument that 
our enemies and our fake allies all want to have because it's it's a chance to shit on liberals, blame the left for everything that's going wrong, ignore the fact that the real problem in this country is that the Republican Party is a fascist destructive force that needs to be eliminated, needs to be gotten the hell out of our politics. The real problem problem is the Republican Party. So who's laying out the big money behind the effort to kill the Build Back Better plan? Because there's a lot of money behind it. Well, surprise, it's the Koch brothers. I'm shocked. I know. Lay down, honey. Put a cold cloth on your on your forehead because it's the Koch brothers. <laughs> this is from the Atlantic uh, magazine, which does some good stuff and some really awful stuff. With the fate of Biden's presidency domestic agenda in the balance, an armada of right-wing dark money groups aligned with the Koch political network is mobilizing to sink Biden's $3.5 trillion Build Back Better plan and deal a devastating blow to his presidency. The Koch network is one of the most extensive and well-funded political and policy operations in the country, having pledged to spend more than a billion dollars in the past four election cycles. The web of nonprofit groups funded by or affiliated with the Koch network, dove, dubbed the Coctopus by critics, broadly promotes an anti-government libertarian vision of American life. In most cases, the donors who bankroll the network's groups remain anonymous, playing a central role in the spike in dark money spending in American politics. Boom. So the big money out there is coming from all the same people who tried to sabotage Barack Obama, who tried to sabotage Bill Clinton. They're always the same people. They're very, very, very wealthy right-wing crackpots who spend all the money they need to. Well, on the left, we, we nickel and dime people. We ask them for five dollar contributions. We I want we, I want to do a fact check on that though because I do believe at this moment in time mm -hmm. the Democratic groups are outspending even the Cokes. Oh, I bet so, I bet they are. But yeah. what they don't, what they didn't do, what we didn't do is build the the policy shop, white right. paper, think tank, media, book mm -hmm. publishing, networking, radio, television network empire. Right to to accelerate that message. And so well, we that's can not what AT and T said. AT and T <laughs> said there were seven liberal networks yeah. and only one conservative one, so they had to fund OAN. Yeah, uh, the Independent Film Channel is not Independent Film Channel. It's not a liberal <laughs> network. The QVC is not a liberal network. QVC is not a liberal network. <laughs> AT and T Classic, Turner Classic is not affiliated no. with CNN, which in turn is not a liberal network. Uh, but what's really interesting to me is how fast and enthusiastically all of our former Republican allies have lined up behind the Coke agenda because it gives them a chance to get back to what they love doing above everything else, which is hippie punching. Mm -hmm. they, they, you can just tell in their voices, nothing gives them greater pleasure than shitting on the left. And that's what yeah. all of our allies, all those people who, who we gave our credibility to, we gave them a leg up, we gave them public platforms, we put our arm around them and said, this is our buddy now because they're on, on our side taking down Trump. All those people are now using all that credibility we gave them and all the media presence we gave them to screw us. And I think maybe there needs to be a lot more discussion about whether that was a wise idea or not. Well, they're all making over $400,000 a year and don't want to pay any more taxes, which Joe Biden thinks they should. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of taxes, I want to talk for just a second about the Pandora Papers that came out. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they point, I think this is just another example of, oh, my gosh, look how American corporations and wealthy people around the world are hiding money from the tax man, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally. Uh, the Pandora Papers, for, for my mind, this whole story points to a possible seismic shift in our politics toward the left, not so voters can get free stuff, but so the right is forced to stop raiding public coffers. And evading taxation. In great. other words, it's the corruption, stupid. <laughs> and you will find, as I've said before on this podcast, boots on the ground, Republicans and Democrats alike hate Citizens United. They hate it because it's it's selling the government, selling we the people mm -hmm. to the highest bidder. And don't forget that the reason there are so few U.S. names on the Pandora Papers is because it's so damn easy to avoid taxation legally if you're an American billionaire. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is look at Christy Noem's South Dakota trust funds mm -hmm. and realize there are massive numbers of legal ways to avoid taxes if you have money to burn. Uh, they were written into the law. They're written by bankers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now you have a an essay here, Drift Glass, in our notes. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, well, it it kind of hit home because I yeah. was reading, like I do, um, an article from the Atlantic, also on supply chain disruptions in our just in time world. Um, and here's how things used to be uh, back when when I was a wee drift glass, just a mere shot glass, really. Um, there used to be redundancies built into our systems. You know, there are backups and backups of the backups and, and assurances that if something went wrong, there'd be something we could do about it. There used to be warehouses full of things that old timers used to call inventory. And then came globalization, which was cheap labor from outside the U.S., which radically shrank our manufacturing capacity. And then came the de-warehousing of everything. After all, why should you waste money on the expense of big tin buildings full of stuff when a global supply chain plus cheap labor meant that stuff could get where it needed to be just as fast without the overhead of redundant backup systems and inventory eating up your, your profits, right? Mm -hmm. You just press a button. It's like, it's like a replicator on Star Trek. You don't need to keep a whole bunch of ham sandwiches down, down in uh, the, the, uh, the storage bay. You can just push a button, ham sandwich appears. And that's how the global supply chain was supposed to work. And it worked great until it doesn't. And this is from the Atlantic. America is running out of everything. The global supply chain is slowing down at the very moment when Americans are demanding that it go into overdrive. The everything shortage is not the result of one big bottleneck in, say, Vietnamese factories or in the American trucking industry. We are running low on supplies of all kinds due to a veritable hydra of bottlenecks. The corona pandemic has snarled global supply chains in several ways. Pandemic checks sent hundreds of billions of dollars to cabin-fevered Americans during a fallow period in the service sector. A lot of that cash has flowed to hard goods, especially home goods such as furniture and home improvement materials. Many of these materials have to be imported from or travel through East Asia. But that region is dealing with a Delta variant, which has been considerably more deadly than previous iterations of the virus. Delta has caused several shutdowns at semiconductor factories across Asia, just as demand for cars and electronics has started to pick up. As a result, these stops along the supply chain are slowing down at the very moment when Americans are demanding they work in overdrive. The most dramatic example is this snarl, is the purgatory of loading cargo containers stacked on ships bobbing off the coast of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Just as normal traffic jams consist of too many drivers trying to use too few lanes, the traffic jam at California ports has been exacerbated by extravagant consumer demands slamming into a shortage of trucks, truckers, and port workers. Because ships can't be unloaded, not enough supply containers are in transit to carry all the stuff that consumers are trying to buy. So the world's getting a lesson in economics 101, which is high demand plus limited supply equals prices spiraling to the moon. Before the pandemic, reserving a container that holds roughly 35,000 books cost $2,500. Now it costs $25,000, hmm. which is completely amazing and completely predictable. And I'm not saying that a more robust manufacturing base if we'd kept it in this country. There's a the former president of the Illinois Manufacturing Association, a very conservative gentleman, used to ask at meetings I would be at, when did we vote to deindustrialize this country? And the answer was, when I would tell him sort of offline, you did. You know, when people in your business decided to shut factories down and ship jobs overseas, you'd make more money that way, you made that decision. Mm -hmm. And and you assumed, I guess, this day would never come or you retire by then or whatever. But this is the world that you made. And now I'm old enough to remember Senator Paul Songus of Massachusetts mm -hmm. raising fire alarms about this over and over again. Yeah. In the late 70s mm -hmm. that we are our manufacturing sector is moving offshore and we've got to do something about that. And there was like, la, 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 la. Don't you understand? We're moving for, to a demand side economy, from a right, demand side to right. a supply side We're economy. We're all going to be working in banks and have sure. nice suits and desks. Yeah. And our houses will be worth a fortune and we can take out second mortgages and buy everything we want. And everything's going right. to be great. Right. You don't, And we'll have a service industry and everything's going to be fine. And a whole bunch of people just stopped investing in manufacturing. They stopped investing in their factories. That's what all the tax cuts were for. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason Eisenhower had a 94% tax rate or whatever it was, was it it generated a lot of revenue and there were a lot of loopholes in it, but it also forced business owners, factory owners to, instead of paying taxes on the profits, reinvesting that money in their factories, paying right. their workers more, building they more factories, doing more stuff. the money on their business rather exactly. than store it offshore. <laughs> and once those tax caps yeah. were lifted, 
oh, let's just plunder the place. Let's just make as much money as we can by and and not buy new equipment, not train new people, not mm-hmm. turn community colleges into into training grounds. And now we're paying the price for that. And it's fixable, but it did remind me of this Harlan Ellison short story, fairly famous, called Repent Harlequins at the TikTok Man, which is published in 1965. And it's a longer story, and I'll make it short. Um, there's a creature called the TikTok Man who controls all of time. Um, and if you if you waste time, uh, he takes it out of your life. You can die if you waste too much time, if you fiddle away too much time. And a man is born into the system who calls himself the Harlequin, who's sick of it. And so he goes around doing silly things and distracting people. And in one case, he he went above a factory, uh, which had slideways and a whole bunch of futuristic machines and unloaded $150,000 in jelly beans all over them. And they clattered down into the machinery and messed up the gears. And the workers thought it was amazing and funny and cool. And everybody laughed. And it was a hoot. It was, it was as he described it, a holiday, a jollity, an absolute insanity, a giggle. But the shift was delayed seven minutes. They did not get home for seven minutes. The master schedule was thrown off by seven minutes. Quotas were delayed by inoperative slideways for seven minutes. He had tapped the first domino in the line and one after one, like chick, 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 the others had fallen. The system had been seven minutes worth of disrupted. It was a tidy number, one hardly worthy of note, but in a society where the single driving force was order and unity and promptness and clock-like precision and attention to the clock, reverence of the gods of the passage of time, it was a disaster of major importance. Because mm-hmm. there's no slack in the system. Yeah. There's, no, there's no rest in the system. You just have to work all the time and produce all the time and create all the time. And everything has to be done exactly on time. And we've built that system. It's called the global supply chain. It's called it's the called, Amazon sh- warehouse. Yes. It's yeah. called just-in-time inventory. Mm-hmm. And as long as it works perfectly 100% of the time, everything's fine. But throw a global pandemic into the mix and you're screwed because – all sorts of things shut down at different rates for different reasons. People react as people do by overbuying, by hoarding. And this whole system is thrown out of whack. And that's the world we created. That It would be a very different world, not saying it would not be terrible. It'd be, we'd have a whole different set of problems. But if we had maintained a vibrant manufacturing base in this country that paid workers real wages, this country would be a very different place than it is now. It's very fun to listen to Youngest Child talk about her job in retail, Mm -hmm. um, cut rate, instant fashion retail. I mean, she works at a store that sells warehouse material, stuff that didn't sell elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And you know those kind of stores. There are TJ Maxx and Marshalls and all those kind of places. She works at one of those. And uh, her observation that people come in looking for a specific thing and don't find it and buy something else anyway that's completely unrelated because you can't leave the store and not buy something. Right. If you do that, you've wasted your time. Right. And her her sense of understanding that, you know, what's more important that you didn't waste your time in the store. You came out of some, there was something. With a thing. That you didn't need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and also the... um the credit card situation of people are signing up for credit cards now for Christmas right. to, to prep for Christmas. And she wants, she said, I really want to tell them, don't do that. This <laughs> credit card has a 26% interest rate from day one. That's good in three locations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't do You're it. You're only going to be able to use it here. And that's mm-hmm. why ev- they want me to tell you to get it. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, do they pay you to get people to, do they give you a bonus if someone signs up for a credit card? No, mm-hmm. I, they don't. And and I don't make the wages that make it worth it to hurt my fellow person in this way, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm very proud of her for resistance, yeah. <laughs> for resistance to the, <clears throat> well, and I was, the cog I was, in that machine. I know? was distant from that conversation, but I heard her basically say, it's capitalism, mom. Yeah, she said, it's capitalism, mom. What are we going to do? It's capitalism. <laughs> and I just like, I just had this warm, like, yes, oh, yes, yes, corrupting the youth. Yeah. <laughs> she gets um, it. She gets yeah, it. Yeah, she does. And that's where, that, that warms me immensely. Well, let's talk for a minute about Trump crime. Yeah, well, okay. Because he keeps on criming, Drift Class. He does. He won't stop criming. And this is what I didn't get upset about the pardons, because I, all these guys are going to keep on criming. It's, we just have to have, I hate, I hate to quote bloody bill crystal uh-huh. we have to have the will 
They're in. They must have them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Senate Judiciary Committee issued a report today. We're recording on Thursday. And we got to say, you know, props to our Senator Dick Durbin, yep. Yep. chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And who lives, you know, two miles from here. And his wife is so nice. His wife you, is awesome. Bump into her at the grocery store. Do. And she knows your name and asks how you're doing. Oh, that's so nice. Isn't that? Uh, but um, the Senate Judiciary Committee's report shows how the month of January 2021 was not just Insurrection Month, Drift Glass. It was Corrupt the Justice Department Month. <laughs> well, you know, all these different holidays are being crammed into the calendar. They so are. you're going to have they some are. overlap. Yeah. 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 And now... Uh, the reporter Betsy Woodruff Swan uh, tweeted that she had viewed an actual letter from Trump's legal team to a person who the one six committee subpoenaed. I think what Betsy's trying to say, there is a witness. <laughs> <laughs> don't say, don't use the W word when you're reporting, no, you just, the, you know, yeah, a person mm. who the one six committee has subpoenaed. You're wasting a lot of Twitter characters there, Betsy, to avoid saying witness. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the Trump's legal team wrote to one of the witnesses that has been subpoenaed by the January 6th commission. And it says, the letter says not to comply with the subpoena, including to withhold documents and testimony. Mm -hmm. Now, let's be clear. All of these people that have been subpoenaed, in, you know, should definitely have their own attorneys. Yeah, They're not well. sharing attorneys with Donald Trump. No. And they don't need advice from Trump's attorney as to what to do unless Trump's attorney is attempting obstruction of justice. You mean and like witness tampering? Witness tampering and obstruction of justice. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are learning from the Senate Judiciary Committee's report is that, tr quote, Trump directly asked the Justice Department nine times to undermine the election result. Mm -hmm. Nine times. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to add something to that that's very, very important. Just in case you think having a wafer thin majority in the U.S. Senate doesn't make a difference, if we hadn't won those two seats in Georgia, Dick Durbin would not be chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. That's true. There would be a Republican in charge of the Senate Judiciary Department Committee. Mm -hmm. And it's the... Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee issued their own report, mm -hmm. a minority report today as well. And their report emphasized that Trump ultimately backed away from the plan. <laughs> Look. Look, he thought about criming. He discussed criming. He talked with all of his Justice Department people about the fact that he wanted to crime. Right. He told them he would replace them with someone else who would crime for him. Mm -hmm. And then they said, we're all, eight of them said, we're going to resign if you do that. And he backed away and went and tried to bully state officials in Georgia. Right. So he basically did nothing wrong, is what you're saying. <laughs> did nothing According wrong. According to the Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee, mm -hmm. Trump's actions were consistent with his responsibilities as president to faithfully execute the law and oversee the executive branch. Yeah, faithfully, ex quote. faithfully execute democracy by taking yeah. it out behind the woodshed and putting one in its skull. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And th that's so. Thank you, Georgia, for yes, those you, Georgia. two Senate seats that made it possible for Dick Durbin to issue a truthful report. A and and let's see some criminal charges from the Justice Department now, because their reputation yeah. has been sullied by this. It, it has been sullied in the eyes of people who care about the Justice Department. Yeah. And the people who care about the Justice well, Department. you think that the head of the Justice Department, the Attorney General, would care about that, the current well, Attorney General. I, oh, I'm sure he does. Merrick I, Garland I, cares about that. I'm dead sure he does. But, you know, I go down the list of, of people who did the sullying. Yeah. And, you know, Betsy DeVos. Yeah. And, and. And Mr. DeJoy, mm -hmm. and r right down the list, Bill Barr, yep. people who who never cared about the fact they were destroying the departments that they ran, yep. uh, because they knew that their voters didn't care. Yep. As long as they streamlined the process of getting Donald Trump back into office, of getting everything in the country locked down under authoritarian rule with some theocratic lunatics whispering in this man's ear, telling him you know that he's a righteous man of God. Uh, they didn't care. And neither did 74-something million other Americans. They like that. This is the government they want. 
So when we talk about besmirching or exposing or sullying, we're to only talking among ourselves. Right. And I understand that. I do a, understand that's that. That's a fine thing. But, but it, it, Merrick Garland is in charge of the Justice Department. Exactly. Right now. And that's why and we winning, have to wield that power. And that's why winning those two Senate seats was so important. Mm-hmm. Because it is objectively important that we have a good Justice Department, right? And it's it actually does faithfully um, follow the law and punish the 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 malefactors. And and if Merrick Garland does not take action against mm-hmm. this criming, it's up to the Democratic led Senate Judiciary Committee that oversees the Justice Department, and that's exactly. why they did this report exactly to haul Merrick Garland in by the tail feathers and say, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is our oversight. We're supposed to do that. What are you doing? And that's why maintaining a democratic majority in both houses is so terribly important. Mm -hmm. Um, Why, Mm -hmm. why mansion proofing the Senate is so terribly important. Um, Couldn't agree more. Well, and speaking of politics, um, as you know, I've taken a, a rooting interest in the Texas democratic primary. Um, because one of my most interesting people is running in it, uh, Matthew Dowd, who either has a long history as the ABC News uh, political director or sprang fully formed with no history from the forehead of Nicole Wallace. Um, I tend to think the former is true, but a whole bunch of people have no idea that he has existed before he started showing up on MSNBC. And he has promised 400 days of honesty. He's going to go out, be among the people, walk among the little people, talk to the proles, and he's going to make uh, he's going to make the Republicans burn because he's going to be totally honest and brutally honest about what the state needs and what's going on and how awful it's been and da 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 da, which is great. Um, except about his one hundred and forty five thousand deleted tweets, <laughs> he has no intention of being honest about that. He has no intention of addressing it. He has no intention of of uh, doing anything but blocking people who bring it up. So I appreciate the fact that he's going to give his whole heart to uh, a string of honest responses to questions, but I have seen him in action for years and he has no trouble lying through his teeth when it becomes inconvenient for him to tell the truth. And he has no intention of acknowledging that he was ever anything other than what he is today. And if that's good enough for you, great, you know, go with God. Um, I think it's incredibly irresponsible to to vote for someone because you saw them on MSNBC a few times and think they're cool. But a lot of people do that. So, And if he's the candidate, and if I lived in Texas, I'd vote for him. If he ends up being the Democrat, I'd vote for the Democrat because I always vote for the Democrat. But um, I find it amusing that he is promising to be honest about everything except his past. And that he's keeping under deep cover with his friends in the media. That's the end of my comment. I wanted to uh, highlight a tweet from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh Uh, She was referencing Axios, uh, who apparently has some behind the scenes information about the infrastructure uh, negotiations that are going on. Uh, Axios claims that Senator Manchin is demanding that progressives pick one of either child tax credit, paid leave or child care. Mm -hmm. This is his demand, according to Axios. Politico mentioned that West Virginia, more than most states, would get huge benefits from all three of those things. but Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says, ah, yes, the conservative Dem position. You can either feed your kid, recover from your C-section, or have child care so you can go to work, but not all three. Nope. All three makes you entitled and lazy. But fossil fuel money, keeping prescription drug prices high, and not taxing Wall Street are non-negotiable. And I replied to that, that Joe Manchin should be locked away for a weekend with a three-year-old. <laughs> and told him to get some work done. And just keep feeding I'm, that kid sugar while he's doing it. I'm just, just yeah. so tired of this. Men, <laughs> no offense to wow. class, but the number of women, the number of children out, every child you see out there, mm-hmm. chances are, unless you're in an extraordinarily wealthy area, the mother of that child saved up vacation time to give birth to that child. And yep. has to go back to work in less than 10 days. That's the other form of planned parenthood, frankly. Yeah, that's yeah. the planned parenthood that's out there. Mm-hmm. Is you have to plan your vacation days so you can go to the hospital and give birth. Mm-hmm. No other industrialized country in the world treats their mothers like shit 
the way America does. Mm-hmm. Um, may I add to that one little thing? Uh-huh. Um, because as you know, all of the never Trumpers are lining up on that side of the aisle. Mm-hmm. That it's crazy. It's way too much money. Uh, liberals are, are, are wrecking the Biden presidency by, you know, fighting for the Biden agenda. And you think, well, but not Tim Miller, because Tim Miller is everybody's cool, gay, hipster uncle, right? And he's a, he's a coffee achiever. Um, he's, he's hip and he's cool. And he shows up on virtually every MSNBC program, except I did check Lockup Marathon. He hasn't been on that so far. Um, and he comes on these shows with a man bun youth pastor energy and says all the right things about Trump being awful, et cetera, et cetera. And he also cuts together these little fun, uh, fun four minute videos uh, for the youth to reach out to the youth because people of a certain age might be put off by the octogenarian Bill Buckley mothball reek at the bulwark of old people talking about tax cuts. Um, so you wouldn't think Tim Miller would be on the side of, of the bad people, but yeah, he is. In fact, today he identified um, the squad and their squadlings as the people who are holding the bipartisan bill hostage unless they get a human infrastructure bill. Shout out to the branding wizards who came up with that one. Thanks to a human infrastructure, this $3.5 trillion monster is a grab bag of liberal priorities, not to mention it costs the taxpayer five times as much as the Obama stimulus and goes on to explain why it's trash. So I know a lot of work at home moms who don't need a road or a bridge to go to work, but they need childcare. Yep. They need pre-K. Well, and, and one of the things that the looping back to the policy of America folks pointed out was that when this passes in whatever form it takes, you can hate all the marketing you want and say it's a, it's, it's a poorly named bill, whatever, whatever you like. But Democrats, if they pass this, will have a year to run on it. Mm-hmm. A year to run on something that has way more cool stuff and good stuff and wonderful stuff in it than Obamacare did. Mm-hmm. You can run on child care. You can run on elder care. You can run on roads and bridges. You can run on solar energy. You can, Whatever you want to run on, this is not a, a grab bag of liberal wish list. These are real important things that Americans actually need, that Republicans are terrified that, re- that Americans will actually get. And Democrats will say, we offered child care for all Americans and we fought for it and we got it for you. And those motherfuckers over there fought us every inch of the way. And voted no. And they voted no. They threatened to blow up the economy rather than give you child care. Mm-hmm. So you go ahead and vote for whoever you want to. But if you're on the side of democracy and keeping America healthy and moving forward. And care for children. Vote, why would you vote for the people who hate children, who hate old people, who hate, hate, hate education? You're, who hate you're, voting again, you're voting for motherhood and apple pie. Absolutely. Literally. And, and yet even cool, gay, hippie uncle Tim Miller. Is lining up to he's say paid to do that because AOC is sabotaging and her, and the squadlings and are he's sabotaging. He's paid to do that. He's paid to do that. Well, Big that's, money that's, paid to do that. Yeah, that's where he gets his. Yeah, that's where his his bread is buttered. Anyway, shall we do a news round? They're losing that argument though, and you know how I know that hmm. because Lauren Boebert has come up with her own infrastructure bill. <laughs> I all I do on social media anymore is put up a Boebert alert. Yeah, uh, whenever I see her, and it's it's that creature from the grudge with a crazy face that walks yeah. upside down and backwards it's like just she's a monster she's a freaking yeah. scary monster and you know well she's decided that she has her own infrastructure plan uh-huh and that's that is because she she sees she's not going to keep her job no well a if bridge she made doesn't of guns. offer some sort of hope to her constituents that amtrak is going to get money and that the steel industry in her district is going mm-hmm. to see some of that largesse she's Toast. She's toast. Yeah. And she should be toast anyway because she's an idiot. Yeah, she's a monster. She really is a monster. Uh, our other senator, Tammy Duckworth. Yeah. We love, we love we Tammy. We love her. We love her. She's great. Um, We're so blessed in Illinois to have I, such they, great senators. It's just crazy. Great senators, a great governor. Come yeah. on, people. Come on, move here. You'd be happy here. Move here. Retire here. Mm-hmm. We'd love it. We'd love to have you here. Uh, but Fox News went after Tammy Duckworth because she doesn't pay property taxes on her house, Drift Glass. That monster. Why? <laughs> Why doesn't she pay taxes, Blue Glass? That seems so incredibly liberal. Sounds like a tax cheat to me. Yeah. And interestingly enough, this story comes out right around the time the Pandora Papers come out. Yeah. Oh, look, Tammy Duckworth isn't paying property taxes. Turns out in Illinois, there's a tax credit on property taxes for disabled veterans. Okay, and Tammy Duckworth doesn't have legs no more because of the war. I have a question. Yeah. 
Why does Fox News hate disabled veterans? Why do they hate disabled veterans, Drift Glass? We hate disabled veterans. I think and I, it, they, they're free to do that because, you know, conservatives, all conservatives hate disabled veterans, obviously. <laughs> but I don't. Unless, unless they're Nazi date, neo-Nazi date yeah. rapists who are also Bible experts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Except there's a little small part to that. Madison Cawthorn isn't a veteran. He's not. Oh, no. so he, he has to pay taxes on his house. That little, he, he tried. You know? I, I won't speculate on what sort of vacuum cleaner masturbation accident caused his current situation. <laughs> because that would be wrong. That would be wrong of me to do that. That would be very bad. I'm, you, I'm not sure I'm going to leave that in. But if class. you look in the, in the tax code, you'll find a tiny carve out for masturbation vacuum accidents. And you know how it got there. You just know how it <laughs> got there. Catherine slipped it in when no one was looking. And that's the problem. As he often does. And yeah. So he got hurt. He tried to slip it in while no one was looking. And <sighs> see, now now we're going to get letters. Now but we're that's going okay. to go to hell. No, you know, already there. <laughs> we're, we're, we live in the town where Barney lives. We're pretty much hell adjacent right yeah. now. <laughs> Barney um, the letter writer. Right? Barney the letter writer. Uh, speaking of stupid New York Times headlines. Hey, we're going to um, do a news roundup now. Let's do that. Uh, this is actually uh, a headline from the New York Times. Uh, it is not from uh, Doug J. Balloon, New York pitch bot. <laughs> As the U.S. hurdles towards a debt crisis, what does McConnell want? Because that's the perennial question that Freud always asked. What, is, what, what did McConnell want? Senator Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, has a long record of tying debt ceiling increases to policy demands. But with a catastrophic debt two weeks away, he has yet to make any. And the obvious answer is, we know what Mitch McConnell wants. He wants to burn everything down and rule over the rubble. But, you know, you can't put that in a New York headline, New York Times headline, uh, because it might make Mitch McConnell mad or something. Yeah. Well, and and the zeitgeist of Washington, D.C. turned out to be as Joe Biden continued to talk <laughs> and would not give up on this is Republicans doing this. Uh -huh. This is the the brinksmanship is Republicans doing this. The mm -hmm. House has passed the bill. Republicans are doing this. And as they kept negotiating from strength and saying, this is Republicans doing this, mm -hmm. McConnell relented. He backed and off said, two weeks and and because he was terrified that there'd actually be a permanent elimination. There'd be a, there'd be a filibuster carve out and then they'd get rid of the debt ceiling debate and, forever. And Joe Biden said this week he green light that, that yeah. he would be in favor of that. And so- Guess who blinked that we are learning that you don't have to kowtow to this bullshit. No, you you can negotiate in good faith and, and progressives are always willing to negotiate in good faith. Yeah. But this fantasy that and this is, again, the entire Beltway media and all of our allies have mm -hmm. all agreed that compromise means 98 percent of the Democratic Party has to capitulate to 4 percent of the, of the party, 2 percent right. of the party. Because that's that's and Republicans that's the only... are just held as yeah. they're a force well, of they're nature. insane. So we no. won't give them any accountability at all. Right. right. This is not. We're not even entering the conversation about a party that you created mm -hmm. that spit you out and that is destroying our democracy. They're they're mm -hmm. not even in the conversation. Let's just talk about how and let's make sure that we always argue that the left, who we are hardwired to hate and have been since Moses was in short pants always it's always on them to capitulate to the people who are closest mm -hmm. to our crackpot right-wing positions and that's the only way democracy will be saved blue gal is if 98 percent of the democratic party uh, is shoved out of the window to make room for the two percent and the staff at the bulwark that's the only way we can save democracy obviously <laughs> i had kind of a revelation this week about um donald trump and uh -oh. it's related to the debt ceiling i was watching hal sparks and he had uh, Donald Trump being interviewed by Yahoo Finance. And it was the, the trash heap that you would expect. I'm not yeah. going to go into any of it, except that when the reporter asked him about the debt ceiling, he said, well, it's very bad if we don't do it. It's also bad if we do it. <laughs> and I, I just kind of blinked for a minute and realized, oh, my God, this is exactly what you know, Mango Mussolini wanted to do after the 2016 election. He wanted to lose and then bullshit his way onto television. Mm -hmm. The only difference between now and then is he wanted to be paid $15,000 an episode right. to sit on his ass and say, well, it's going to be terrible either way because Hillary Clinton's a horrible monster. Right, right. 
And now he's begging people to let him on television, phoning it in and saying, Literally. oh, it's terrible this way or this way. You know, everything's just terrible. And I have the perfect answer, which is it's terrible either way. And mm-hmm. I had a perfect plan for Iraq and, and Afghanistan. And I had a perfect plan for health care. Well, remember, his original plan for dealing with the deficit or yeah. the debt, I can't remember which, was to declare bankruptcy. Declare bankruptcy. Like, like Donald Trump always did. Yeah. Go to bankruptcy court, take the United States to bankruptcy court, and then China would only get like 50 cents on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. Because that, that's how that's how things work. And everyone just looked at him like, that is not how this works at all. At all. At all. And it was, it was his tiny, mushy, coked up, addled brain that could not comprehend that his shitty, corrupt business – and the United States government were not synonymous in any way. Yeah. So rather than learn anything about governing, he decided to make the U.S. government into a shitty, corrupt business that he could understand. Yeah. And he damn near got away with it. And yep. again, I cannot stress enough how 74 million Americans like that idea. They're I think that's a terrific it. idea. Yeah. Anyway. So the Senate postponed a vote to suspend the nation's debt limit after Republicans planned to filibuster the effort for the third time in two weeks. <laughs> Uh, Joe Biden suggested that it's a real possibility for Democrats to revise the Senate's filibuster rules to overcome the Republican blockade on raising the debt ceiling. That's the Chekhov's gun on the wall. That's what well, Mitch McConnell and, is terrified of. And it sh- they sh- he should be terrified of that on voting rights, too. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah. reason to take Chekhov's gun off the wall for debt ceiling, which no. you know is to benefit Wall Street and the bankers and make sure there isn't a shock to the system mm-hmm. than it is to... Guarantee voting voting rights rights for everyone. Yeah. Six top. Oh, excuse me. Trump's top aides are expected to tell the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol to screw off Mm -hmm. and they should go to jail. They should. And a federal judge did, in fact, sentence a January 6th rioter to 45 days in jail and 60 hours of community service and a $500 restitution for the damage done in the Capitol building. There should be a zero following all of these numbers, but Mm -hmm. that's just me. Matthew Mazzocco's defense attorney had asked for probation, while a federal prosecutor had suggested three months of home confinement instead. I'm sorry. Instead, during Mazzocco's sentencing, U.S. District Judge Tanya Chetukin said that if the defendant, quote, walks away with probation and a slap on the wrist, that's not going to deter anyone from trying what he did again. She added, quote, the country is watching. Of 11 defendants sentenced so far, Mazzocco is the first to receive a jail term when prosecutors prosecutors had not asked for one. This is the thing that's blowing my mind, is that there is some conspiracy in the law somewhere to let insurrectionists off with a slap on the wrist. I Watch don't know. whiteness work, Drift Glass. Yeah. yeah, well, there you go. That's Couldn't, couldn't agree more, Blue Gal. Trump praised Mike Pence for downplaying the January 6th Capitol riot saying Pence's Fox News interview very much destroys and discredits the unselect committee's witch hunt investigating the insurrection. During his interview with Sean Hannity, Mike Pence blamed, quote, the media, unquote, for distracting from Biden's, quote, failed agenda by focusing on one day in January. You know, Mm -hmm. that day when they wanted to hang him. Yes, but that's all water under the... uh... Yeah. They want to use that one day to try and demean the character and intentions of 74 million Americans. Well, that's they my job. They wanted to hang you. Yes. What a yeah. bootlicker, as yeah. Anna Navarro said. That's water under the Owl Creek Bridge, if you yeah. will. Yeah. And and honestly, um, the character and intentions of 74 million Americans really do need to be demeaned. Really need to be, need <laughs> to be called into question. <laughs> They're trash people, and their opinions are awful, and they... they are, they stand for atrocities and autocracy and fascism and racism in this country. And we need a very large megaphone to scream at them like they scream at small children right. every time they open their mouths. The Biden administration revoked the Trump era rule that barred health clinics that receive federal funds from advising people about ending their pregnancies. Rudy Giuliani admitted under oath that his quote-unquote evidence of voter fraud in the 2020 election came from unvetted posts on Facebook. Uh, he thinks. He's not sure. He doesn't, he doesn't really remember. remember which social media platform right. he pulled them out, out from. I and just, why would he fact-check them? You right. would never write a story about them if I fact-checked them. Right. He says, look, I've done a lot of coke. Okay. 
and my brain doesn't I'm work drunk right. Most of the time, my my brain is broken most of the time. You can't expect me to remember things like facts and stuff. Uh, Florida continues to be the only state that hasn't turned in a plan to receive billions of dollars in aid for their schools. Now, um, speaking of phoning it in, Donald Trump, we learned this week, his one of his propaganda networks is literally part of the phone company. Would you like yep. to take this one, Blue Gal? We learned this week that the Trump propaganda arm known as the OAN network wouldn't exist without crucial aid from AT&T. They told us they wanted a conservative network. They only had one, which was Fox News, and they had seven others on the left wing side. When they said that, I jumped to it and built one, said OAN founder Robert Herring Sr. The telecommunications giant has poured tens of millions of dollars into OAN, which received 90% of its revenue from a contract with AT&T-owned television platforms, including DirecTV. If Herring Networks, for instance, was to lose or not be renewed on DirecTV, the company would go out of business tomorrow. OAN lawyer Patrick Nellies testified as part of a labor lawsuit filed by a former employee. Couldn't be clearer. Couldn't be clearer who's at fault here. Who's who's the evil behind the evil? Yeah. And this uh, OAN, by the way, is the one that funded a lot of the uh, so-called cyber ninjas, although Dick Durbin called them Ninja Turtles. That's in the his, congressional record now. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Um, Wisconsin Republicans proposed a constitutional carry legislation that would allow adults to carry concealed guns without permits or training. They want to so, be Texas. They do. They're they're envious of the fact that Texas has a All shoot those em school up. shootings. Yeah, they love that stuff. This is this get more guns into the hands of lunatics is the long term Republican plan. Um, the public comments portion of the District 186. That's our school district. Mm -hmm. was a hot mess. This was a debate on a non-binding resolution over whether or not the district would recommend COVID vaccine mandates for students once they are approved. Mm -hmm. One of the first speakers says the vaccine, that there's no long-term data, and then 10 seconds later says the long-term data shows it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Another speaker outlined terrifying side effects of the unproven COVID vaccine while saying COVID doesn't really cause serious outcomes. The next speaker, the school board, knows the harm from mask mandates and how the big pharma Fauci jab has caused hundreds of thousands of serious side effects and deaths. They don't know that because it hasn't. Also railed against were the big bully gang, Pritzker, Biden, Illinois State Board of Education, and, of course, unions. They, they, live, they missed the lesbians in the ACLU, but they got almost all the big bully gang right. Yeah. The good mm -hmm. news is this resolution passed four yes, two no, one voting present. The bad news is there are two lunatics on the school board and one coward. And uh, the district stopped posting after YouTube flagged and removed one of their meetings because the public comment section contained misinformation about COVID-19. Of course. Um, one thing that the district is doing is doing COVID vaccine. Uh, I don't want to call them workshops, but whatever they are, they're open, come in, get a shot. Uh, Clinics. At the school. Clinic yeah. at the school. Yeah. Um, well, on the weekend so that people can go and get their shot in a place that they know how to get to mm -hmm. um, and a, a location that they trust. Well, schools, I mean, I've always thought this. I know you have too. Schools should be community centers. You know, yeah. during the evening, they should be homework cafes and they should have tutors and they should be welcoming to the whole family. Pizza yeah. and juice and homework. There are a whole lot of parents out there who could use ESL classes, especially if you have, mm -hmm. you know, first or second generation immigrants, which well, a lot of schools have. And and also um, G GED classes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, no, there's a, there's just a lot you can do with a big empty building after hours. And mm -hmm. one of the things you can do is have a community health center. I know a couple of schools that do that. There's some rules about physically separating one from the other, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. My big question is: I wonder if Barney the letter writer was at the school board meeting. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I will know. investigate that and get back to you because I know you're all sitting on the edge of your chair going, was Barney there? Was Barney and there? You I, know, Barney I, doesn't have any kids in the district, but who cares, who really? Cares? It's more it important that we hear from Barney. Mm -hmm. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty, however, is a beautiful sheep named Buttercup. Oh. Buttercup was sent in by friend of the pod, Dog Face Herman. And of course, Buttercup eats freshly poured sheep food, our fake sponsor. Mm -hmm. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your sheep, cat, whatever pet you have, 
will sit on the kitchen floor or the paddock floor or the grass and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Buttercup. Buttercup's a beautiful sheep at our Facebook page or website. We want to mention that this past Monday was St. Francis Day, the celebration of the animal kingdom. You know, there's so much sad news about animals going extinct in our world today. Let's work to make that stop. And the Internet kitties agree that every day should be St. Francis well, Day. Well, for them, every day is, and they won't shut up about it. The patron saint of animals would take mm-hmm. care of us better. But if you think you know better than the Lord, you go right ahead and do what you want to do. <laughs> Maybe Madison Cawthorn could define yeah. the Bible for us. You can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet or barnyard animal to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware, if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy. It's always a good day to fire to joy. It the way. always is. Like like St. Francis Day. It's like St. Francis a good day. day. <laughs> it's always, always a good, a good day, day to fire to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Uh, some listeners have been in the habit of sending us books uh, from a bookseller around the country, wherever. And uh, there's nothing in the package that indicates who it's from. So we can't thank you. So if you sent us a book in the past few months and haven't heard back from us, let us know because we'd like to thank you, but we don't know who sent the book. So, And, and if you haven't us sent us a book in the, in the past few months, why haven't you done that? <laughs> because we don't need any more books. That's true. My oh, TV right. red pile is now taller uh, than my my head. It goes, um, you know. There's a wonderful New Yorker cartoon I should mention that a woman who is, I believe, crouching over the pile near her bed going, no, this is my emotional support pile of unread books. Yes, yes, that's it. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to it too. We would really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think progressives should not give an inch on the Build Back Better until there's a guarantee that Congress will get Purina's salmon pate back on the shelves. It's a problem. It's a real problem. And the cats are letting me know they're not happy with it. I would also (laughs) like to mention that one of our listeners and readers took a picture of herself at the Women's March wearing a Both Sides Don't t-shirt. She did. She did. She did. And it just warmed my heart. I'm like, it Aah! made us feel so good. Thank yes, it you did. so much. We really do appreciate that. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.